Well, it's a pleasure to be here. Thank you all for coming. Um, we'll go ahead and get started. Do you want to? I didn't listen to the oh. lesson, but I can fill. Yeah. No. I'm, I'm, I see a laser. Um, that's the bone that you can feel a little bit of a network. Yeah, bone. that's what I'm pushing. I you know it's not. This one, right? Yeah. It's not working. Do you mind the end? Just sure. that? Yep. Thank you. Um, okay, go back one if you would. Yeah, it finally worked. Yeah, yeah I did. Okay. I apologize. You weren't supposed to see all those other ones yet. Um, <laughs> tips for engaging with your community. Uh, these are pretty obvious ones. It's kind of like when you want to make a friend, you know? You're, you, you're open. You're genuine. You're yourself. Um, you don't, uh, well, plan for all abilities. So diverse abilities. Make sure you're thinking of everyone in your community, um, regardless of what their need might be. Um, try to switch to saying yes and rather than yes but, because yes but kind of tends to, if someone's talking to you and they present an, something that may not quite be true, if you say yes but and you just told them that what they said is wrong and discounted everything they said, which people get really hurt feelings about that. They want to feel like they know something. So if you use yes and, you still have the opportunity to correct a misconception but you're not discounting their view, if that makes sense. Um, and show your passion. Most of all, show your passion because uh, when you're passionate about something, people can't help but to warm around you. Okay, we'll see if this works now. No, can you advance one? It's still not working? No. <laughs> Try again? Maybe I'm not pointing it at the right place. Nope. Yeah, there we go. Thank you. Um, you can see Eclipse viewing is very, very popular. Um, and <laughs> I love this picture on the end because the two without the glasses are not looking at the sun, only the one with the glasses. So this is my safety slide. <laughs> safety is priority. So if you do not have glasses on, do not look at the sun. Uh, it's, it's for the annular, right? Uh, which will be here. During totality on the total eclipse path on April 8th of next year, you can take them off. And, and the best way to know when that moment arrives, you'll stop seeing anything in your eclipse glasses. So you can take them off your head, view totality. The second you start to see Bailey's beads, which is that little bit of light coming through the valleys of the moon, put them back on. Um, be, <laughs> otherwise, you'll, you'll get some serious eye, eye damage, which... I don't think anybody's prepared for. Okay, next slide. You should get up. Oh, okay, great. So I'm here to talk to you about place and being in place. We go to many different places in the world, right? To visit with our families, to enjoy, to be there, to experience it. Sometimes it may be to see a wild animal that you have never seen before. I can't even imagine being this photographer and having a whole wolf stare directly into my eyes. Seems intimidating. Um, but sometimes we go to places for that reason. No. It, it's not me, I don't think. Okay. It's advancing, I think it's you. No, try again. Whoa. Sometimes we go to experience something we never have before, like a lovely rafting trip down the river. This is Cataract Canyon at high water. And uh, as you can see, high water can sometimes send you quite the memory uh, ingrained in your brain of holding onto the raft with all of your might. Sometimes you go to a beautiful place to see a gorgeous natural feature like a hot thermal pool. And you can also smell these, right? This is Yellowstone National Park. They're very fragrant. <laughs> so that'll be burning your brain. <laughs> Sometimes you go to see your child become the very first time they've ever become a junior ranger. And you're so proud of them. So to bond with your family, to be with your family. 
So everybody just close your eyes for a second. And online, that goes for you as well. <laughs> and think of about a place that has particular meaning to you. Somewhere that you love to go and just be. Who are you with? What's the surroundings like? What sounds and smells come to you? Now take a second and share that with your neighbor. It's going to get really loud in here for a second. Sorry. Okay, let's come back. <laughs> so I had the opportunity at an event here during AAS, double double AS, um, American Astronomical Society's meeting to meet um, Jack Schmidt, who was an astronaut from Apollo 17. And I asked him when he looked back at the Earth from the moon, like what was the thing that he felt? What did, what thoughts went through his head? And he said, my first thought was, well, there's the Earth. That's exactly where it should be. <laughs> and then he said, my second thought was, that's home. That's where my love is. You know, that's where my family is. That's where everybody I know is right now. And I'm here. And uh, home is a big, powerful thing, right? So what I'm trying to get at is when we think of those special places, we are drawn to these universal connections. No matter where you are on Earth, you can understand what home is to you, right? We all have a home. And we also get to engage in it and experience things as a family, as friends, however you like to travel. This is from Dead Horse Point State Park where I used to work. And we were using pinhole projectors made out of PVC pipe and duct tape because we didn't know there was a partial eclipse until last minute. <laughs> and, um, it was pretty engaging for the people that were there just kind of wandering around. We, we pulled them out, showed them how they could project. You can see the sun is at their back. They're not looking at the sun. So if you ever hear you're going to use a pinhole projector, uh, make sure you keep your sun, the sun at the back of you. Um, and it's really important to have opportunities for people to engage in the eclipse themselves. Something active, something that puts them in place with their own experience. Um, I thought I had one more slide. I'm missing it, so I'll just tell the story. <laughs> I think I cut it because I was like, I don't have time. Um, I, I live in Moab, Utah. And in Moab, Utah, we have um, red spotted toads. And we have a, all these ephemeral pools where the water catches when it rains. And in those pools, we get to watch those uh, toads go from eggs floating on the surface to tadpoles and then on to toads, little baby toads. And because of that transition, we, um, it, and I think about the eclipse, and I think that's kind of the same thing that happens with the eclipse, right? Is a metamorphosis from sun, moon, to moon over sun, and then to partials, and then to off. Um, so there are ways, wherever you are, whatever place you work at, whatever site you're going to be at for the eclipse, there are always ways to connect to what's happening up there in the sky. And so it's finding those universal stories for yourself. So I highly encourage you to go out to your site, sit, somewhere and just watch the cycles of light and dark. Listen to what the animals do in those cycles. And also watch what people do around your site because that's gonna help you identify those universal connections before people come. And then you have a way to connect to the resources at your site, which gives them a chance to 
meaningful, meaningfully engage in the eclipse itself. And you can see there's our QR code. I'm Chris White. I work with the Earth to Sky Interagency Partnership, which is a partnership between U.S. Fish and Wildlife, NASA, the National Park Service, and hopefully a few other federal agencies coming up soon. Um, and there's my information. Feel free to email me for more information. Thank you.